Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. Brought to you by AMS Media. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeu. And this is the second edition of our player review series. And the player in focus today is Ainsley Maitland-Niles. That's the player we're going to be focusing on. We're going to be discussing his season so far. We're going to be looking ahead uh, to whether we believe he has a future at the club or not. And whether Mikel Arteta should be looking to sell or keep. Uh, the uh, young Arsenal man and we're going to be talking about it in some detail I'm going to be giving you my thoughts my opinion and what would be my decision as to whether he's worth keeping or not and we're also going to hear from Chris Davison he's going to share his thoughts as well just like he did on yesterday's one where we spoke about Granit Xhaka at length Ainsley Maitland-Niles 22 years old when I think of Ainsley Maitland-Niles, apologies if you heard my phone going off there, it's terrible, really unprofessional, but I'm not going to start the video again, so tough. Um, 22 years old, and when people say the name Ainsley Maitland-Niles to me, the first word that comes to my head is frustrating. Frustrating because when I look at Ainsley Maitland-Niles, I see a player with a lot of ability, with a lot of talent, with the kind of composure that just was so rare in a player of his age. Uh, And that's what kind of saw him come into the first team and and take like a duck to water, essentially, because he looked so calm. He looked so composed. He looked experienced way beyond these years because he seemed so comfortable in possession. He never panicked. He never rushed things. But that has quickly changed into a a bit of an attitude, a laziness, Um, maybe that feeling of I've made it because I'm playing so many games in the Arsenal first team. Reality is that Ainsley Maitland-Niles was brought into the first team initially by Arsene Wenger at left-back when Arsenal were in a really, really desperate situation. He took the opportunity with both hands. He played really, really well, considering it was in his position, considering it was his wrong side. And then as time's gone on under Unai Emery as well, he was asked to to keep filling in those full-back positions, more so at right-back later on. And and lately, when he has played, it's been at right-back or right-wing-back, depending on the system that day. And for me, this is a guy who should have progressed at a far higher rate than he has. It's almost like he's stagnated. And I put that down to his attitude. Now, I'm not with Ainsley Maitland-Niles on the training ground every day. I'm not privy to anything that you guys aren't. So this is just my observation. And you are absolutely entitled to disagree with what I'm saying here. You are absolutely entitled to have a different opinion and to share that opinion in the comments section below. I read all the comments. I always like the comments, um, even if I disagree with them, because that's what we're encouraging on this channel. We want as many of you to get involved in the discussions and the debates that we have as often as you possibly can and whenever you feel like you want to. So when I talk about Ainsley Maitland-Niles, I don't talk about a lack of ability. I talk about a poor attitude. That is the thing that drives me crazy. You can get footballers who get to a pretty high standard in their careers without being, I'm not going to say without being talented, but without being as talented as others because their attitude is right, because their work rate is there, because their desire and their passion for the game is as good as anybody's. And that is a massive, massive thing in football. Of course, you need to have talent, but you also need to have the right attitude and the right um, you know, mindset in order to to express that talent and to be given the opportunities or to earn the opportunities to then show that talent on the world stage in some players' cases and to become a great. And and it is all up here as well. It's not just about talent. Talent can take you a long way, but the attitude needs to be spot on as well. And for me, when I look at Ainsley Maitland-Niles, I don't see that. I see somebody who lacks in that department. 14 appearances in the Premier League this season. Um, He's got two assists. Not that I... I'm sitting here judging him on assists because he's been playing as a fullback, as I've said. Um, and I'm OK with that, but it's a statistic that popped up. So I thought I'd throw it in there. He's been in the starting lineup for Arsenal in the Premier League on 50 percent uh, of the occasions they've played in the Premier League. So 50 percent of Arsenal's Premier League games, Ainsley Maitland-Niles has been in the starting lineup. He's made six Europa League appearances this season. Um, and his average performance rating across all competitions, that's a, this is according to whoscored.com, is 6.6 out of 10, which is hardly inspiring, but it's not a disaster either because it's pushing towards that 7 out of 10, which you'd say is probably pretty solid and pretty standard, and, you know, that's that's okay. 
But when I think about Ainsley Maitland-Niles and I, you know, he gets caught out sometimes positionally. But again, I'll come back to that point. He's not a right back. He never was a right back. He never grew up learning that position. It's a position that's been thrown at him. It's a position that at times he has performed in really, really well. And he's got Arsenal out of holes at times. I thought that um, there were some games where he was fantastic, but there are some games where he just mentally switches off and where his attitude comes to the forefront. And that attitude continuously lets him down. And I think Mikel Arteta has seen that attitude problem that I'm referring to. Because ever since, um, you know, these last few weeks, he's completely left Ainsley Maitland-Niles out in the cold. He's even preferred to play Socrates at right back than give Ainsley Maitland-Niles a chance. Which says to me that clearly he's got an issue with what Ainsley Maitland-Niles is showing him on the training pitch, in match situations, etc, etc. And Ainsley Maitland-Niles has always made it pretty clear it's always been common knowledge that he doesn't want to play in that position, that he sees his future either in the centre of midfield, out on the flank, etc. But there were a few occasions last season where he was given the opportunity to perform in those areas and he didn't do it for me. Um, And I know it was a small sample. I think it was two or three games in the Europa League. But if you're making that much noise about it, you've got to take those opportunities when they come along. And for me, he hasn't done that. He hasn't done that. And he's displayed... A bit of arrogance, maybe a bit of discontent at the way things are going at Arsenal. Maybe he's not entirely happy, but you've got to be able to flush that out of your system before you go out on a football pitch because that radiates off of you. And people always talk about Mesa Ozil's body language, and rightly so. It doesn't look great at times, and people are right to, to make an issue of it. Maybe issue is the wrong word, but they're right to make a point about it. But I don't see those same people making the point about Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Is it because he's a young British player who's come through the academy at Arsenal? Is it because he's not earning 350 grand a week? In which case, you need to park those things and push him to one side because we're talking about the player on his own merits and what he is showing to the fans. And for me, Ainsley Maitland-Niles is not showing enough. He doesn't look like he cares. He doesn't look like he has that burning desire in his stomach to, you know, to push on and to fight for his place and to really battle for it and to really grasp the amazing opportunity that he's been given with both hands. Spoken about his average performance rating, 6.6 out of 10. According to transfermarket.co.uk, Ainsley Maitland-Niles is currently valued at £16.2 million. It's a lot of money considering he's almost a, how do I put this? He He's a guy who we haven't really seen the best of because he's been forced to play in other positions. But equally, would he have got anywhere near as, game, as much game time, sorry, if he wasn't doing that role? Is it a case of somebody who's probably had more game time than he deserves because the club have been in a desperate situation? And in fact, is Ainsley Maitland-Niles not as good as we initially thought? The more I see of him this season, the more I think that's the case. Call me harsh. Let me know what you think in the comments. But that's how I feel about Ainsley Maitland-Niles now. I feel like his emergence was more due to circumstance rather than him actually being that good, than him actually displaying the things that are required to become a top, top quality player. Hector Bellerin's injuries over the last couple of seasons have been, uh, you know, a real problem. And Ainsley Maitland-Niles has benefited from that. Is it the fact that Arsenal have always seen Hector Bellerin as the go-to number one right back that prevented them adding someone in that position? But then Mikel Arteta's gone and got Cedric in. And I know it's just a loan deal and he, he might not even get to play now. But the fact that Mikel Arteta went and got someone rather than sticking with Ainsley Maitland-Niles or the fact that he plays Socrates there, a centre-back, who, you know, there are some centre-backs you look at and you think, yeah, this guy could fill in as a full-back from time to time. I look at, I see that when I see Mustafi. I see someone who's quite sharp, someone who's pretty comfortable in possession and I think this guy could do a job at full-back if we got into a desperate situation. And the one time that springs to mind when he'd done that was the North London derby 
uh, away from home last season. Yes, he gave uh, away a penalty that never was, by the way, um, which Spurs benefited from. But other than that, he was solid. He had a really, really good game. I don't see that in Socrates. So the fact that Maitland-Niles has fallen so far down the pecking order tells me that Mikel Arteta isn't impressed. Tells me that his days as an Arsenal first teamer are numbered. And that Arsenal, in conclusion, should be looking to move him on. I mean, when you compare him to Bukayo Saka, who's another young player who's come through the academy, who got his opportunity in a position slightly different, like, you know, playing left wing and left back, it is different in the sense that as a left winger, you're predominantly being asked to attack them. And as a left back, in theory, although the game's changed a lot and the modern fullback does get forward a lot, one is a defensive job, one is an attacking job. Bukayo Saka, though, even if he gets caught out of position from time to time when playing at left back, even if he overcommits going forward, I can accept that because I can accept that there are flaws in a player who is young, who is learning and who is being tasked with a position, with a role in the team that is completely foreign to them. I've got sympathy for that. And I can let that go and I can be okay with that. And when I see the mistakes happen, yeah, they piss me off at the time, but I can look back with a cool head and say, you know what, ain't his position. Positionally, he's not away. He doesn't know. It's not what he's been doing. It's not what he's been learning throughout his footballing education. But when it comes to Bukayo Saka and you compare him to Ainsley Maitland-Niles, I see two completely different attitudes. I see someone who has grabbed the opportunity, Bukayo Saka, to get in the first team. Doesn't matter how, doesn't matter where he's playing, it doesn't matter that it's not his primary role, he's taken that opportunity, he's doing what he's being asked, he's made an effort to learn the role better, he does defend pretty well, and he's also shown what he can do in the final third. Now Ainsley Maitland-Niles might have been at that point, maybe a couple of years ago, when he first broke into the team. Maybe he had that enthusiasm that Saka has, where he was like, this is my opportunity. It's not ideal, but I've got to take it and I'm going to work very hard and I'm going to make sure that I make the most of it. But with Ainsley Maitland-Niles, that's tailed off. Now, is that because the club have essentially taken the piss out of him and asked him to do this job, to patch up, to fill in, and it's been to the detriment of his progress, in which case I've got some sympathy for for Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Or is it that Ainsley Maitland-Niles simply hasn't got the stomach for this and he hasn't got the stomach to persist and to keep his head down and to work hard and maybe have to accept that if he wants to be a permanent fixture in this Arsenal team, he has to learn that position. He has to get his head down. He has to focus and he has to show 100% commitment. Who knows? I don't know because I've not spoken to Ainsley Maitland-Niles. I can't sit here and tell you how he's feeling. I can only speculate. But the signs I'm getting from Ainsley Metton-Niles are that this is somebody who had the opportunity, was as enthusiastic and as promising as anybody when he first came into the team, but that has curved off. And I don't know if it's his attitude. I don't know if maybe he just isn't as good as we initially thought. But for me, Ainsley Metton-Niles will never be an Arsenal first team regular as long as we have Mikel Arteta in charge. And therefore, if you're asking me now to keep or to sell, for me it's to sell. It's to move players like Ainsley Maitland-Niles on, who we can't just hold on to because they're products of our youth academy. We can't just hold on to them because they're young and they're British and etc, etc. Is he good enough in the long run? I'd say no. So move him on and let's look at improving in those areas. And if you do want someone who can fill in at right back. I don't know who that is because, you know, Cedric on loan, probably not even going to play a game if things continue the way they are before he returns to Southampton. Will the deal be made permanent? We don't know. But the fact that he was brought in just says a lot to me about how Mikel Arteta views Ainsley Maitland-Niles and how he sees his future. I think Arteta's mind is made up. I think he doesn't like his attitude. I think he doesn't like... um, you know, the the way he performs. He doesn't like his sort of the way he carries himself. And I think that some of his comments recently were quite telling when he did say 
He's got to work as hard as everybody else and he's got to show that he wants to play for Arsenal. That was, for me, Mikel Arteta's way of saying, you, you keep asking me why he's not playing. I'm indirectly telling you that he's not displaying the things that I want to see, that he's not displaying those non-negotiables that Mikel Arteta spoke about so eloquently when he first arrived at London Colney. So for me... I think it's time to move Ainsley Maitland-Niles on. But let's hear what Chris Davison has to say as well. Always good to get a second opinion. Um, so, uh, Chris, thank you very much. Let's hear what Chris has to say on the topic. Hi, everyone. I hope you're all keeping well. So, obviously, Harry's focusing on Ainsley Maitland-Niles in this video. And I think it's fair to say it's been a bit of an up-and-down season for the players, isn't it, really? Um, just going back to the early stages of this campaign... Ainsley was a regular starter for us, filling in for the unavailable Hector Bellerin. Um, and, you know, just talking about his overall performances when he has been called upon uh, as a fullback. And, you know, bearing in mind it's not his natural position, he's more of a central midfielder, or a wide midfielder. I actually think he's done okay. Um, yes, you can tell he's a, a young player and there's still a lot of development for him to go through, a lot of things of, for him to work on. And, Yes, you can tell it's not his natural position at times. He has struggled um, now and then. But overall, I think he's put in a few solid performances. Um, and I know it's probably not been easy for him. It probably isn't easy for any player playing out of his position. I know it's not ideal, but that is unfortunately just part of football, isn't it, really? Um, but we've seen Ainsley Mate and Niles' potential. I think he's got a lot of potential. Um, I, th I think he still has the capability to be a very important squad player for us um, going into the future as well. But hopefully we'll see him play in his natural position a lot more now. Hector Bellerin's back and Cedric Suarez is here now as well. Because, he, you know, he is still young. He needs to be getting games under his belt. That's, you know, very important for the, the development of any young player such as Ainsley. So, yeah, I'm hoping we'll see more of him between now and the end of the season. It'll be interesting to see if Mikel, you know, is going to fit him in his plans. He might not. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, we'll, we'll have to see how he does between now and the end of this campaign, if it finishes, of course. Um, uh, I think maybe depending um, on the depth we have throughout the squad come next summer, who comes, who goes, and obviously depending on where Mikel sees uh, Ainsley's future, Alone may be the, the right path, the best path to go down. I don't think I'd like to see him sold just yet because, I, like I said, I still think he, he's young, he's got potential and he, he deserves more of a chance in his natural positions as well. So we'll have to wait and see. I know it's very brief, but they're my sort of um, main thoughts on Ainsley Mate and Niles. It'll be interesting to see and hear what you guys think as well as Harry's opinion as well. So uh, thanks for listening, guys. Take care. My thanks to the wonderful Chris Davis and thank you very much, my friend, for your contribution once more. Hope you guys all enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow Chris on Twitter. His uh, Twitter handle is in the description below. That concludes our second player review episode. Ainsley Maitland-Niles, the topic of discussion today. Um, and we'll be back tomorrow with a third one. It's going to be Alexander Lacazette. That's who we're going to be touching on. That's who we're going to be looking uh, into in depth and we'll also be bringing you a second episode tomorrow which will be out tomorrow night which is my interview with adrian clark that'll be out on wednesday evening so uh don't forget to be subscribed if you don't already hit that little bell icon and that way you will never miss an upload and uh, we'll be back very very soon with more until then stay safe and uh, we'll speak to you soon ciao